what up speed addicts fam welcome back to the channel and for anybody new that's part of the channel um if you like car stuff you like turbos you like fast stuff and you like to laugh be sure to subscribe to the channel hit the like button hey even go as far as hit the notification bell on today's episode we are to the point on the 240 where it's time to install the bump stick so stick around and i will tell you which bump stick that we chose for the turbocharged 240. all right everybody if you've been following the channel you've noticed that um, not only have we built the turbo kit for the 240 but we've also been doing a few other uh, minor upgrades some of them actually are above minor upgrades but one of my most excited upgrades besides the vs racing 80 millimeter turbo is this my summit racing camshaft uh summit racing if you don't know them i mean these guys have been around in the car market for the longest time um they haven't really been much of a use to me because i'm an import guy like i said before the v8 i had a rb25 they ain't selling nothing for no nissan styline motor uh but now that i got a v8 i'm pretty excited because now i can feel like i'm part of the crew meaning that i can order stuff for my car off of their website so one of the items that I bought was a performance camshaft. Camshaft that I chose is, it's the Summit Racing SUM, the 8716. Um, so AKA the turbocharged stage three camshaft. Talking to the information team over there at Summit, told them what my setup was, they recommended this. There's a lot of numbers and a lot of information on here. Um, I got a Garner North Carolina education, so I'm not real good with numbers, but I do know that this 231 intake and a 234 exhaust is gonna be nice for top end RPM. And then also know that this uh, 115 load separation, it might not have that chop like the 2J got, but it's still gonna get the job done. And also with the camshaft, let me show you what else I got. Oh yeah, I also got me some comp cams, single valve springs. I know I should have went with duals, but hey, if Richard Homer said that they good, then I'm gonna use them out. Plus, these were a little bit cheaper than the dual valve springs. Hey, if they break or something like that, y'all will find out first. But I'm going I'm to give these jokers a shot because they've been around for a minute. And if you're curious of the part number, that's the part number there. And uh, the major part of the valve springs that I'm mostly concerned about, I know seat pressure and all that stuff probably has a lot to do with a lot of stuff. But uh, the way I break it down is, is I want to know uh, the lift on my camshaft, which is a 575-600 lift. And if you go and look up this part number and check out the stats on these valve screens here, uh, max lift is 0.625. So we're, we're in good terms. So let's go ahead and start uh, tearing everything apart. You're gonna need this whip line that you normally use from a, uh, a compression tester. You're gonna need some kind of regulator that has a section where you can hook up this end to the regulator, hook that end up to your air hose. And then, you know, it'd be nice to have uh, some kind of gauge so you'll know exactly how much pressure you're putting in there. You're gonna need a 24 for the crank bolt, a 10, a eight, uh, something to take the spark plugs out. And then you're gonna need something to pull the camshaft out, which is a super long three eighths uh, extension. And uh, as long as you got all that, I mean, you ready to get the job done. I'm sure I'm probably missing at least one or two more items but watch the video and, and you'll know how to do this. So if you, if you haven't done anything like this before, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. You gotta take everything off the front, including the harmonic balancer, uh, get all your accessories off, get your water pump off. I've already taken my valve covers off on both sides. I've removed the exhaust manifold and I've also removed all eight spark plugs. So now we're ready to tear into the motor. So let's go ahead and start doing that. First thing we're gonna do is take all these out. This is the uh, valve train rail. We're gonna take this off on both sides and then uh, we'll go on as far as pressurizing the cylinders and using our nifty little tool that uh, I got off of eBay, my favorite store, and they got them on Amazon. Um, but let's go ahead and start taking these rocker arms off. I 
actually, you know what? I think I'm jumping a little bit far ahead. I probably can do it in the order I'm trying to do it in now, but I want to put this thing at TDC first. So let's go ahead and get that front cover off. That front cover is gonna be off in this amount of time. Voila. I've always seen Joker do that on YouTube, so I kind of always want to do it. But now that we got that on there, we need to line this mark up with the mark that I got to look up real quick because I don't know where that mark is. All right, so there's the mark. You got the circle on uh, the cam gear plate or this cam, yeah, the cam gear or whatever. You got that. And then it's probably hard to tell, but there's also a dot on the front face of that, that gear down there. So that's TDC. Everything taken apart. Uh, now it's time to uh, bust these three bolts loose and to take this off. Um, I'm probably gonna go to the extra mile and I'm probably gonna make a couple of marks on this cam gear and the uh, chain so that I know that it's gonna go back together exactly how I took it apart. That's just the OCD in me, um, but I don't think it's necessary. I mean, the chain can kind of go on anyway as long as you got them two dots lined up. But I'm gonna take this off and I'm kind of gonna let the chain just droop for the most part. So now what they say is, is turn this mug around like this. And what that's supposed to do, matter of fact, they say put water pump bolts in there. Actually, you can use water pump bolts to take it out. But they say turn this thing around like this a couple times. And what that does is that sucks the uh, lifters up into the lifter trays. Um, Cause I guess if you take this mug out and the lifter drops, it's over. Well, it ain't over, but you got to take the head off. And if you don't feel like taking the head off, then yeah, it's kind of over. But now we gotta take these four bolts off and then we can re remove this retainer plate. All right, uh, Speed Addicts fam, I got the uh, front retainer cover off. So now we're ready to remove uh, the camshaft. But the only concern I have is, look at this. This right here is where my hood latch bolts up. I mean, it's hard to tell, um, but I think I can get it out. I took the other camshaft and kind of set it up there. Worst case scenario, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put my man power on that. I'm gonna use my strong arm. I'm gonna use my strong arm. Elf. Elf. Here. Oh, take my hand. Ah, come on. <laughs> You're gonna fall unless you take my hand. No, give me your other hand. Oh, my other hand isn't strong enough. You take my little hand. No, get it away from me. Break it. Man, I'ma bend this mug up. If I had to, I'd cut this puppy off and regrind it and weld it back together. But let's see how smooth and swift we can get that camshaft out. And also the known trick in the LS community is is water pump bolts because they're the same thread pitch, um, but they're way longer. And then you, this is what this is for too. That comes in handy. Um, I don't know how long this is, but I mean, it's about two feet. What you do is you can slide that down in the middle like that. Bottom that joker out. Oh, oh hold on. And then, uh, that's the wrong sound effect. And, uh, and then, yeah, we're going to pull this mug out. So, wish me luck. Give it a couple more spins. Make sure them lift the buckets is where they belong. quick that's the old camshaft I had in there 
part number 5308 all it is is the uh the ls6 uh camshaft and uh, this is a good opportunity to make sure that we don't have any of the um, lifters turn. Um, it's a known fact that if you got worn out lifter trays, uh, that the lifters actually rotate. And when they rotate, it's got a roller ball on it. So when it rotates, the roller ball ain't rolling no more. And it just ends up scraping against the loaves. And I mean, this puppy look good. So I don't know if I'm going to sell it or not. Um, I might get something like a Tahoe and throw it in. You know, we might build another LS project. But... This is a good sign. And in the LS community, they always say, do not look at your cam bearings. I mean, I mean, all of them got a little brass on it, but I'm gonna rock with it. I'm not gonna change them puppies out unless I blow the motor up, which might be soon. This is how that Summon Racer cam came. It came all uh, protected in its own liquid and juices, uh, but I am still going to lubricate this puppy before we install it. And uh, this is what I'm going to use is some leftover stuff that I had back when I built my RB Federal Mo Mogul, Mogul. I don't know. That junk sound like it's European. So I I'm going to say it's pretty daggone good. Oh, it's seal power. But yeah, we're going to splash a little bit of that on there. And then we're going to slap that camshaft back in the 240. So I pulled it out the bag and like, look at that. It's like a wax or something. So I don't know if it's like some kind of special oil formula or something they put on the can when they grind it um i was just gonna slap some juice on that mug but that joke look like it need uh some dollar gentral um spray but i ain't gonna do that because that junk might be too acidic but i am gonna make a little love to this boom stick and try to see if i can clean some of this junk off because see look at that that mess ain't coming i might have to put some scotch bright uh, not scotch bright i'm gonna have to put something on it Maybe like Scotch Bright with a little oil saturated in the Scotch Bright. I don't know. Uh, I probably ain't gonna do Scotch Bright, but I'm gonna do something, and we're gonna get this joker back back to its um back to a presentable state. All right, Speed Addicts fam, I got the camshaft super duper extra polished up, and you know what I end up using the Speed Addicts Garage Signature Sauce. Wow, acetone, A C Y tone. We ready to hit that puppy with a little bit of lubrication juice. Hit it with some of that KY. And then we're going to throw it back in that hole. And real quick too, let's talk about this retainer plate. Um, it's a known fact that these go bad and it's a good idea to replace it. Um, that seal right there, you can't tell, but if you run your finger across it, it ain't got much of a bump on it. And that oil is gonna come in through one side, it's gonna go across, and then it goes out the other side. Basically, it goes from one side of the block to the other. And if you have any, if that little deal right there is not got like a little lip on it, where it creates a seal, you're gonna have low oil pressure, that's a no-no. So I went over there, and bought one of these uh, cam retainer plates, ICT billet. They come with a little torque uh, recess bolt. Um, I don't know if I like this, to be honest with you. I mean, you can tell it's got this dry finish. It's got that little, like, doo-doo on the backside right there. And then look at that. I mean, it's like all smushed out and junk. I, I don't know. I don't like it, but I'm going to use it because it's got a bigger lip on it than the other one. And uh, it better not rust, man. If it rusts and I pull this mud back apart and it's nasty or something, I'm calling you out, ICT Billet. I don't care if you is made in the USA. But whatever, it was cheap. So that's why I bought it. We're gonna see if cheap works out. Got went ahead and put everything back together. Hold on, it's got a smudge on this thing. All right, uh, Speed Addicts fam, I went ahead and put the retainer back on. ICT did not come with any torque specs, so I went ahead and torqued it to uh, factory specs, which is 18 foot-pounds. Uh, put a little Loctite on these, these three here. Hit those with my little uh, quarter-inch Milwaukee. Got all my lines matched up, which don't really matter. What matters is the dot and the dot, which those match up as well. And uh, the one thing I want to add before I put all this back together is I got me some black uh rtv or gasket maker anytime you got three areas coming to one you need to use this and so what i'm talking about is you got the block you got the oil pan and then you're going to have that front cover seal 
Anytime you got three pieces meeting together, same thing like the valve covers, you need to put you a little bead of that black stuff. Black Lives Matter. And, uh, no, nah, I might take that out because I don't want no drama. And uh, so I'm going to put a little bit right here, put a little right here, and I'm going to slide that cover back on real gently like. And then we can go ahead and start putting on the valve springs, our comp cam valve springs. Now we're to the point where we're ready to remove these uh, LS6 valve springs and we're ready to install our comp cam springs. So let me show you the tool that I purchased um, that's hopefully gonna get the job done quick and effective. Wow, so what I have here is the dual valve spring installer kit. I don't know if that's the real name of it, but that's what we gonna call it on this episode of Speed Ass Garage. But basically make a long story short, it bolts up and then when you tighten up that nut there, it basically compresses uh, the valve spring so that you can remove the keepers. So let's go ahead and set up our air, put a little pressure on the cylinder and let's see how this works. All right guys, that's the purpose of the gauge. As you can tell, we got 60 PSI. I got it screwed into there. You can hear a little bit of the hissing of the blow by or whatever. So let's hook that tool up to here and let's try it out. All right, I guess that wasn't enough pressure. So let's go up to 70, see if that works. Nope. All right, let's try 80. guys um, just to explain what I had going on when I first start compressing this tool with the air in there uh, it was pushing down on the valve and allowing the air to uh, not stay in the cylinder anymore and it start coming out the exhaust port um, so what I end up doing is taking the air off of it which I mean basically turning this counterclockwise no air on the cylinder and I took my nine millimeter socket and what I did is I put the nine millimeter socket here, tapped on each one of them a few times to kind of break. Uh, what I was attempting to do was is break the um, these keepers away from the valve. Cause when I was compressing this, everything was kind of stuck and wedged together so much that it was actually opening up the valve. And uh, so when I tapped it with the nine millimeter and the hammer, uh, as you could tell, I was able to compress this thing and the uh, air pressure kept it all in place. Um, I did end up having to use 80 PSI um, and then also a minor note I don't know this 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 tool here is slotted so you can move it left to right um, I noticed when I first start uh, tightening up this 13 millimeter bolt that this side uh, the keepers would loosen up before this side so I don't know if maybe I needed to 
wedge that over a little more. Either way, uh, I'm gonna keep finessing this. I'm gonna go ahead and knock all these out. You've already seen one done. And uh, I'll turn you back on when they're all swapped out. Look at the finished product. That little pretty blue is gone, and we back to that natural machine look. But uh, let me let me show you some stuff. After I did this, I got to talk about a few things. All right, first of all, this little tool that I bought for like $18.99, $21.99, free shipping. Hey, this thing work. This thing work, man. This this little bitty little cheap thing was better than that a, a, a Moose Emerge collector that I bought. Um, but one thing I want to add is, as you can tell, there is a bunch of NICs on there. When I start tightening this thing down, loosening it, and doing it like as many times as I had to do it, I start seeing like a little sheen of metal right here, meaning that I guess a little bit of material was, was coming off and flaking off and kind of chilling on that area. When I looked at the threads, the threads was good, but I said, you know what, let me put the worst thing but the best thing on it, meaning, you know, NICs. I mean, it's, it's good because it works good, but it's the worst thing because look at my hands. That junk is everywhere. Once I put the NICs on there, man, I was able to get my little quarter inch Milwaukee impact, hit that mug down, the compressor springs, hit that mug to bring it back up, and it worked out real nice, actually. I didn't do it using that ratchet wrench no more. Now that we got that all done, I, I guess we done. No, we're not done. Uh, while I got everything apart, it's a good time to look at the push rods. Uh, usually if the push rods are need to be replaced, they'll be like old out. It'll be mushroom looking. There's oil that comes in through that little hole. But now we're ready to put the uh, rocker arms back on. Valve covers are back on. We're done up underneath the valve covers. Um, I got actually got some uh, other valve covers I need to put on because we are gonna be running a uh, catch can. Matter of fact, here's one of them. I still need to uh, weld a dash 10 bone on the passenger side one. I'm actually gonna probably weld it like right there. Um, but I ran out of argon. Should be picking up some more argon tomorrow. So uh, there will be some more welding. And plus I need argon to finish welding uh, the intercooler piping. Um, I got to modify the cold side. And then we also got to upgrade the intercooler. I don't know if I'm gonna put it on or not. I probably won't because I don't think I'm gonna need it. But I do want to go ahead and put on the harmonic balancer. And then I want to go ahead and also put on my water pump as well. I had to get half inch uh, water pump spacer. So of course there's two spacers. It's gonna be four gaskets because it's gotta be a gasket on both sides. Um, and then of course it comes with the hardware. Uh, if you need to know what kit that is, that's gonna be item number 551524. Half inch LS water pump spacing kit. So there go that water pump. And just to get an idea of what the spacers look like, that's all they look like. Just about an extra half inch of space. Um, I think I'm gonna leave uh, this video off here. Uh, the bulk of what I want to show has been completed, uh, which is the valve springs, our Summit Racing Stage 3 turbo cam. Then we got our comp uh, valve springs on there, 625 lift. And so now it's just a matter of piecing everything together. We still have a little bit more to do before we fire this thing up, but we're that much closer. So uh, in the meantime, hit the subscribe button, hit that like button. There's gonna be more content to the channel. This month, we have another project car that we're gonna be working on and it may or may not be the same as what's over here. So stick around, hit the subscribe button. If you like what you see, comment below. In the meantime, I will see you guys later. Hold it down.